In this video, I will show you the circuit diagram and code for this magnetically activated Arduino controlled automatic pet door. I designed this door to help stop our dog from eating our cat's poop. You can find the video explaining that whole process linked in the description of this one. Here I have a cardboard mock-up of the door. On the back it has two doors controlled by servo motors and lining the bottom of the opening I have a bunch of reed switches. These are magnetically activated switches that are normally open and close when you bring a magnet near them. The Arduino is programmed such that the door is normally open to let certain animals through, but will close when an animal with a magnetic collar tag on it walks too close to the opening, activated the switches and closing the door. When that animal leaves, the doors will open again. Of course, you could reverse this behavior in the code to have the doors close by default and only open when an animal with a magnetic tag gets near. Let's switch over to the computer to take a look at the circuit diagram and code in more detail. First, let's look at the circuit. In this example circuit, I have four read switches, an indicator LED, and two servo motors, although you could expand your circuit to include more of any of these parts. I'm going to go over the connections for each part pretty quickly in this video, but we have individual tutorial videos about read switches, LEDs, and servo motors and using them with the Arduino as part of our Arduino tutorial playlist that you can find linked in the description of this video. Each read switch has two wires. You will need to solder longer wires to your switches so you can mount them on the bottom of your door opening instead of putting them in the breadboard. Each one of those wires goes to a separate row in the breadboard. One of those rows will be connected to positive five volts from the Arduino and the other row has two connections a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor to ground and a connection to one of the Arduino's digital pins. In this configuration, since the read switch is open by default, when there is no magnet nearby and the switch is open, the pull down resistor will pull the voltage low. So the input pin will read low by default. When a magnet comes near and the switch closes, it will be connected directly to five volts and the pin will read high. So again, with this configuration, with the external pull down resistors, the switches will be low when there is no magnet nearby and high when the magnet gets close. You repeat those connections for each one of the sensors. I use different wires so I wouldn't get them mixed up having a different color for each sensor. Or again, each one is going to have one of its wires go to five volts and the other wire goes to a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor and a jumper wire to one of the Arduino input pins. The switches are symmetric, so it doesn't matter which end of the switch is which, you can flip the switch around and electrically everything will behave the same. I also have an LED connected to one of the Arduino's digital pins in series with a current limiting 220 ohm resistor. The LED is not really necessary, but it's useful for debugging if you're having trouble getting your servo motors to work. And then I have the servo motors, each of which has three wires. They are color coded, but you need to check the type of servo you have because the color convention can vary depending on the manufacturer or where you got the servos. Orange, red, brown is common, but there are also some that have red, black, and white. So again, make sure you look up the information for your servo if what you have doesn't match what I have in this video. For these, the orange wire is the signal from the Arduino. So I have all of these going to the breadboard, but then the orange wires go to one of the Arduino's digital pins. The red wire is power and the brown wire is ground. So since these are pretty small servos and I only have two of them and they're not going to have much of a load on them. I am powering them directly from five volts from the Arduino, but in general, it's good practice to have an external power supply for driving motors when you're using an Arduino because the Arduino itself cannot really provide very much power. We have a separate video about using external power supplies with the Arduino, again, linked in the description of this one. But to recap what I'm doing here, each servo has three wires, one signal that goes to an Arduino digital pin, power, that goes to five volts and then ground that goes to ground. And of course those buses are connected over to the five volt and ground pins on my Arduino. Now let's take a look at the code. The high level overview of this code is that it is going to monitor all four sensors or read switches. And if any of those switches go high, then it's going to rotate the servos 90 degrees to close the doors. 
And then once all the switches go low again, it's going to rotate the servos back to their initial position. So to do that, we start out by including the Arduino servo library, which is makes it very easy to control servos. Then we declare a bunch of variables for all of the different pins we're going to use. So we have four pins for the sensors or read switches. We have one pin for the LED, and then we have two pins, one for each servo. I'm going to need variables for the four sensor or switch readings, and then we use the servo object to create, sorry, we use the servo library to create servo objects, one for each motor. You can call these whatever you want. I've chosen to call them left servo and right servo since I have servos on the left and right sides of the door. I then define variables for the start and finish angles of each servo. These have a range of roughly 0 to 180 degrees, although again, you need to check the information for your servo or data sheet if available to give you the actual range. And the start and finish angles will depend on how you have them mounted. So you can see here I have my left servo starts at zero and goes to 90 degrees, whereas my right servo starts at 90 and goes to zero degrees. I then have a delay time variable that is going to keep the doors shut for a certain amount of time after one of the read switches is triggered. That's going to prevent them from flapping back and open back and forth really rapidly if a magnet is kind of bouncing back and forth over the threshold for the read switches to detect them. In our setup function, we use the pin mode command to set all of these sensor pins as inputs. Here is a quick side note. If you know how to use the input pull up command like this to enable the internal pull up resistors on the Arduino, then you could use that to get rid of the external pull up resistors in your circuit, but you would need to wire these switches a little differently. So forgetting that is usually a little more intuitive for beginners the way we have it wired. So we're using the external pull down resistors here, but if you want to reduce your external part count, that is an option. We then have the pin mode command to set our LED pin as an output. And we use the attach command with the servo library to tell it which pins our two servo objects are going to be using. Then use the write command to set them to their initial angles, and I initialize serial communication to print out values for debugging, but you can comment that out once you're all done debugging and your code is working. In our loop function, we then use the digital read command to read the value of each one of these sensor pins and assign that to one of our sensor variables. And then I use a bunch of serial print commands to print those values out. So again, this is useful for debugging. You can upload this program, open the serial monitor, and then hold a magnet up to each of the sensors one at a time to make sure you see the value toggle and that that sensor is working. And for example, you don't have a loose wire or didn't forget the pull down resistor or something on one of the individual sensors. So do that and make sure all four of these sensors are working individually before you really worry about getting the motors to work. Finally, we have the key part of this program, this if else statement. What we want this to do is if any of the sensor values are high, we're going to turn the indicator LED on and move the servos. And if all four sensor values are low, we're going to turn the LED, turn the LED off and return the servos to their initial position. And we can check if any of these sensor values are high using the or operator. So that's these double vertical bars here. This statement is saying, if sensor one is high, or sensor two is high, or sensor three is high, or sensor four is high. So only one of these sensor values has to be high for this statement to be true. And then for an if statement, if the condition in these parentheses is true, then the code in this part of the if statement will execute. As a side note, if it is more intuitive for you, you can write it out like this, if sensor one equals high, double equal sign. That is actually redundant. You don't need to do this because these individual sensor values will either be false or true on their own. So this is like saying if high equals high or if true equals true, which is also true when the sensor value is true. So technically it is redundant to write this out, but if you find that more intuitive or that is what you are used to because it's what you've seen elsewhere, including our earlier Arduino tutorials on things like using a button, that is perfectly fine. It will still work. It is just redundant and can make this line pretty long and a little more cluttered. 
So I have excluded that here, and I'm just writing if sensor one or sensor two and so on, but doing the double equal sign high is just fine and your code will still work. So if any of those sensor values are high, meaning a magnet has been brought near any of the four read switches, then we are going to use the digital write command to turn the LED on, use the write command to move the two servos to their finished positions, and then add in a delay so the doors will stay closed for a little bit even if the animal moves away and the read switch is no longer near the sensor. Else, if none of these switches are high, so remember this first condition will be true if any of them are high, so the only way for the else condition here to be true is if all four of the sensor values are low, then we're going to use the digital write command to turn the LED off, and use the servo write commands to send these servos back to their starting positions. I have this configured to allow access for one animal to a certain area by leaving the doors open by default and then denying access by closing the doors for an animal that is wearing a magnetic collar tag, but depending on how you program it and which animals are wearing these tags, you can use it for different purposes. For example, you could use it to let your pets in and out of your house with an indoor-outdoor pet door, but prevent unwanted animals like raccoons from getting in since they don't have the collar tag. Remember that for the parts list, circuit diagram, and code for this project, you can check out the links in the video description. For over a thousand other fun hands-on projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.